a couple of hours ago now. Joining us from Shamrock Avenue is our reporter there, Kate Gudsell. Kate, thank you for joining us. You were at that media conference, were you? I was, yes, yeah. <laughs> and um, we're actually just on it. It's actually on it. Sorry. No, you go. So tell me where you Street. are. Um, yeah. We're actually on the spot uh, just by, just where Shakina was taken at about 8.30 this morning on Shamrock Street. And she was walking, as uh, Sarah Stewart said, walking to school with her two sisters. She's on Brighton Crescent. It's about a 10, 15 minute walk from here when she was taken. And she was actually dropped off two and a half hours later at about 11 o'clock on the other side of town, about seven kilometres from here on Hines Place, which is just down by the Manawatu River. Her two sisters did a tremendous thing, didn't they? Because they shrieked and yelled and made a lot of noise and raised the alarm immediately. Yes, they did. And actually, as Sarah Stewart said, that they were alerted by a member of the public who was, actually lives on the street. And I've spoken to that member of the public's mother. She and her son, who actually heard the screams and alerted the police, they didn't want to go on um, tape and talk to me. But they did say that he was very sh shaken up and that he's been speaking to the police today. OK, what is, we're trying to get some understanding of what the police are saying about whether or not this man was known to the girls. Uh, some suggestion that, that they may have seen him in a park previously. Was that mentioned at the police media conference or has is, or is this been eliminated or simply not discussed? It hasn't been discussed. The police wouldn't discuss anything that happened between the hours of sort of 8.30 and 11 a.m. or around the family. They basically gave us very, um, just the mm. straight facts, which is essentially that they said that the man is not known to the girl, that the, um, and that they basically have no leads on him at all and no description. And I think they've been talking to the girls today about, you know, in order to get a description. So all, they ha all they're really going on from what Sarah Stewart was saying yeah. this afternoon was basically a man driving a white sedan. They don't even know the, the name of the, the manufacturer of the car or anything like that. And I did actually speak to um, the girl's mother this afternoon and she didn't want to be spoken to. But, um, yeah, the, I think the investigation's basically ongoing and Sarah Stewart said, that the family had been very supportive of it. Uh, and no discussion whatsoever about what is thought to have happened in that two and a half hours that Shakina simply disappeared without trace. No, not, I specifically asked about that and they said they didn't know and they just didn't, didn't want to talk about that. They yeah. kept it to the very basic facts that they're pushing for um, the public to come forward on, with information on this, that they, you know, they've got about more than 30 officers working on this, that um, they're scouring the CCTV footage from around this area and in Heim Place where she was dropped off. And they're basically saying that whoever was driving this car would, would have looked, they think he would have looked quite out of place around this area at this time at 8.30 this morning and on Hind Place and that it would have been very unusual to see a man also drop a young girl off and then just go off. So they're really urging for the public's help on this. OK, can you just clarify? So Shakina was picked up where you are and dropped off. So she was picked up on Shamrock Avenue, precisely where you're standing now, and she was dropped off... She was picked up on Shamrock Street. That was actually the police called it Shamrock Avenue, but it's Shamrock Street that we're standing on. So she was picked up on Shamrock Street at 8 30, about 8.30 this morning and at about 11 o'clock this morning, two and a half hours later, she was dropped off on Hind Place, which is the other side of town down by the Manawatu River, about six or seven k's from where I'm standing right now. Thanks so much, Kate Gudsell. We really appreciate it. Kate Gudsell live from Palmerston North. Obviously, police are working very hard to identify who was behind this. Very difficult when you have little or no in, uh, sort of witness testimony. A white sedan is being described. Those areas very important that Kate was talking about. If you saw anything, uh, and obviously a white sedan is a very ordinary car, but if you just clock one or think you clock one at those times this morning in those areas, please contact the Palmerston North Police. Kate spoke to residents and local parents at Brighton Crescent earlier. And how are you feeling at the moment about it? Uh, still quite, you know, shocked. Yeah, pretty shocked. And just, yeah, I know nowadays I'll be mostly taking my daughter to school and making sure she gets in that gate and, yeah, just for her safety. Yeah. So I think everyone's in a state of shock and, you know, I've got kids that used to go to that school that's moved on to, uh, nieces and nephews have just gone to that school they've moved on from the end gone to colleges and, yeah. I found it pretty scary, you know, unsafe for the kids that walk from far distance just to go to Takaro. 
where really the parents should be with them walking themselves to school, there and back after school and before school. And do you usually walk your kids to school? I normally do sometimes, but then I meet them at the mailbox after school to see whether they're safe or not. And would this make, make you like, rethink the, your, the way you take your kids to school or anything like that? Yeah, now I do rethink just to walk them to school after what I've seen 